Hello Internet, Taliesin here, and today we are talking the Lich King, and we are talking the Old Gods! And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Taliesin, that's all very well and good and everything. I mean, those are two things that I'm always interested in. After all, Icy Scourge commanding Arthur C. Fun Times and Slimy Tentacle Overlord Worship are right up my street, totally. But why talk about them now during Battle for Azeroth? After all, BFA is a faction war expansion. It's all purple girls smirking and angel boy crying. There are no old gods in Battle for Azeroth. Well, you know what, Internet? It's beginning to occur to me that there might be just the slightest chance that you and I have been well and truly bamboozled, and that in fact Blizzard have, with all the subtlety and sleight of hand of a master illusionist, so that you might not even have noticed, but it seems that somewhere along the way there, actually it turns out that, and I know you're probably not going to believe this, so I hope you're sitting down, but apparently there might be be some old god stuff in BFA after all. I know, I know, I'm as shocked as anyone, trust me. But yes, that's right, suddenly there are tentacles basically everywhere in Battle for Azeroth. It might as well be called Tentacle for Nazoth. But there's another theme to this expansion too, which actually is a bit of a surprise to some of us. That of death in all its various forms, as well as the various realms of death and their leaders. There's a number of things going on which point towards one figure in particular, the Lich King. So here's my quandary, Internet, because on the one hand, we've got the old god threat that we're all kind of expecting and that we're looking forward to looming under the surface and just starting to show itself explicitly in patch 8.1.5. But then on the other, there is this slightly more mysterious rumblings coming from the north. And I can't help but feel that at some point, both of these things are going to need dealing with. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, yes, Taliesin, that's probably true. But with regards to the title of this video, the answer is obvious, isn't it? You click bait, shill man, click shill beta boy, because clearly Nazoth is here right now. He is literally in patch 8.1.5, in the flesh and in the eye. And of course, we're going to be fighting him before we fight the Lich King, who we've barely touched on at all. And to which I say, yes and no. And mostly no. Because I think that actually there's a pretty strong chance that our relationship with Nazoth is not going to play out as many of us expect, and that actually Bolvar might become more important much sooner than we think, which I am totally going to explain to you with actual evidence right now. So join us for Italiasin Talks as we ask Nazoth or the Lich King, who will we fight first, okay? Go, 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 go. So yeah, on the face of it, this is a pretty open and shut case, because if there's one thing this expansion has been building up to in a big tentacly way, then it's the last remaining old god, Nazoth. The Nazoth promise that was made way back in Cataclysm seems finally ready to be kept in Battle for Azeroth, and the clues have been there right from the start. Zalatath, the Shadow Priest Naifu, talking about how great Zothmeister and the old god cities are, and how maybe soon we'll get a chance to see them for us ourselves all the way through Legion, and Ilganoth, the evil tree, apparently referencing him during the Emerald Nightmare encounter. The revelation at the expansion reveal in BlizzCon 2017 that we would be fighting Nazoth's number one gal, Ashara, the warbringer that gave us our first actual glimpse of the old god outside of a cartoony Hearthstone card image, Stormsong Shrine, which echoes the design of the old god temples on the never used but pretty well known vanilla dragon isles, oh yeah, and the old god servants hanging out inside it, and outside it, and actually all over Kul Tiras and Zandalar, and the small matter that in 8.1.5, all pretense at hiding goes straight out of the window, and look, obviously this is about to be a spoiler, but I should probably tell you anyway, it's about to be a spoiler, okay? But in 8.1.5, Nazoth is here, reawakened, alive, and right in front of us. So yeah, surprise! So the question in the title of this video just got answered, right? We're obviously going to fight Nazoth first, because here is Nazoth right now in the game. Except there is something missing in our one-on-one -on -one time with Nazoth in 8.1.5, isn't there? The conspicuous lack of fighting. In fact, I would go further. I would suggest that not only are we not fighting the old god right now, we are actually actively 
helping him and furthering his agenda. For one, there's the teeny tiny little fact that it's us that actually awaken the Zoth in the first place. And not in a kind of, ah, we're going to summon you so we can vanquish you sort of way either. As is so often the case in World of Warcraft plotlines, our habit of just going along with seriously any old suggestion that any NPC has results in some seriously shady shit going down. Like, I'm not being funny, but I am one of the most powerful characters on this planet right now, lore-wise, is there ever going to be a time when I don't mindlessly take the side and follow the order of the very first person I meet in every conflict? And the trouble here stems from the escalating Naga invasions around Kul Tiras and Zandalar in patch 8.1.5, which, in an effort to stop once and for all, we come across our old Naifu Zalatath wanting to get released from the confines of her blade prison and exist in some kind of humanoid mortal form. And well, obviously we're going to go ahead and help her out with that, aren't we? That's actually a little unfair, you know? As if I'm going to say no to helping Naifu ascend to a genuinely dateable, I mean, finally quelling the Naga assaults. So, of course, we head off, collecting the three voidy artifacts that she needs. The Void Stone, the Trident of the Deep Ocean, and the Tempest Caller. Killing whoever gets in the way, because they were almost certainly baddies, because Zalatath told us they were baddies, and the whole questline climaxes in us taking our new toys to, and look, I did say this was going to be a spoiler, okay, the precipice of oblivion, where we do exactly as we are told in placing the three artifacts in position which awaken the god of the deep, who is clearly Nazoth, because it turns out that bringing all this powerful awakeny type stuff to him was part of a deal that Zalatath had made with the old god for her freedom. So although we might want to take credit for turning Zali into a sexy void elf and accept all the knifey love and appreciation that should be coming our way as a result, Actually, what we've done here is act as an errand boy for her to fulfill a promise to Nazoth, and he has set her free. And if that makes you feel used, well, this next bit isn't going to help. Because do you remember when I said that we collected three artifacts for Zalatath to buy her freedom with? Well, more accurately, it's kind of four. Because when the artifacts are placed and the old god stirs, Zalatath says, God of the deep, I have bought you the opener the bringer of truths, the torch that lights the way. And at first, I assumed that those three phrases referred to the three items that we just bought, the stone, the trident, and the crown. But actually, that's not the case at all. The opener, the bringer of truths, the torch that lights the way, that's you. You are not only a part of this bargain, you are the most important part of the bargain. It was you that Nazoth asked for, and you that Zalatath was taking to him. And on the one hand, obviously, that's quite nice, isn't it? Because it's nice to feel wanted and important, and the bringer of truths is quite a cool title. I don't mind that at all. Not too sure about the opener. Sounds a bit weird. But on the other hand, oh shitting heck, why does an old god want us specifically? This sounds, like, really bad. I mean, this cannot be good, because surely he's just gonna like eat me or something while I haven't got my raid team to protect me, and boom, Azeroth's biggest hero is out of the way and his invasion can commence. But no, because even more terrifyingly, after doing some typically ominous old god talk at you for a bit, Nazoth bestows upon you his gift, and then he lets you go. So far from being the next big baddie of this expansion, he's kind of, right now at least, our boss. The gift that he bestows upon the player, which can be purified away, but doesn't have to be, allows you to see other players and NPCs that also have the gift, creating a weird potential secret society of Nazoth followers around the open world. So far from gathering our strength and destroying the final old god through the power of friendship and fat boss guides, we are now working for him. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Taliesin, I already know that in patch 8.2, we go to Najatar and eventually kill number one most important Azoth servant, Ashara, in a raid. Why would we do that if we're all on the same team now? That's a very good question. That's fair enough. But the answer is incredibly simple. Nazoth wants us to. Think back to that Ashara Warbringer animation that launched just before Battle of Azeroth, the one where we see Nazoth enlist Ashara in the first place, saving her and her people by turning her into Naga, and she's all like, yeah, seriously, dude, I'll totally get your empire back for you. Just give me, like, all of the power. It'll be fine, yo. Oh, and another thing, I ain't no scrub servant, dude. I'm a queen, okay? I have my own autonomy, yeah? The relationship between the two, right from the very start, as it is presented here, is frictious uneasy, 
not very trusting. And now it's been 10,000 years and, well, look, Ashara has still not managed to get Nazoth's empire back for him, has she? In fact, after 10 millennia, she hasn't even successfully awakened Nazoth, which is something we apparently managed in about 20 minutes of questing the second we put our minds to it. It's almost as if she hasn't really been trying isn't it? After the Naga built their sexy new underwater city and a few thousand years passed without much incident, it might well have occurred to Ashara that, you know, Nazoth is pretty useless locked away in Nihilutha, wherever that is, whatever that is. Basically, if we just don't help him, there's not really much he can do, is there? Like, seriously, if we just don't build up Nazoth's empire for him and instead just kind of do evil Naga stuff and try and make ourselves the bosses of the whole planet, then honestly, What's he gonna do? And the answer is, obviously, eventually, to get us on side to mindlessly slaughter her and all of her people, just like we've done so many times before in other raids. And there's been so much talk with BFA being this big faction war expansion that, you know, when the Horde and Alliance are at each other's throats and busy trying to wipe each other out, wouldn't that be the perfect time for old gods to make their move and take advantage of our stupid self-inflicted weaknesses? And we assumed that battling Shara in Najatar would be part of that. Like, she's attacking on behalf of Nazoth, but what if she's not doing it on behalf of anyone? What if those Naga invasions aren't Ashara and her forces fighting for the glory of the old god masters, but for the glory of the Naga? For the glory of Ashara? Quite literally, Zin Ashara. It doesn't make them any less dangerous, of course. The Naga invasions themselves in game are a bit underwhelming, to be honest, but I get that Blizz are trying to tell us that they are a big deal and need to be stopped. And don't forget, that is how we came into contact with Nazoth in the first place, to try and stop the Naga. The Crucible of Storms raid is basically us proving ourselves to Nazoth by killing off his most powerful champions. Very similar as it happens to Arthas's plan for us in Ice Crown Citadel. I think it's a pretty safe bet that Nazoth wants the rebellious Queen Ashara gone as much as we do. So what if this whole excursion to Najatar and Ashara's Eternal Palace isn't our continuing struggle against the infinite forces of the Void, but doing the old gods a solid favour. Now, what could happen, of course, is that in fighting Ashara, we all actually discover that we have more reason to fight together, Horde, Alliance, and Naga against Nazoth than with each other. Team up for an 8.3 attack on Nihilotha, whatever that is, wherever that is, with Nazoth as the final boss as expected, and also, obviously, we can totally have playable Naga now, GG. And to be honest, that is possible. If I were writing this story, that's probably what I would have pushed for, so my own ego won't let me discount it entirely, but it's certainly looking more likely at this stage that in fact we are just going to kill Ashara and do Nazoth's dirty work for him. Maybe Nazoth would take this opportunity to make his move, with the last real obstacle handily removed for him by us, and that's how we get our 8.3 Nazoth fight climax. Or maybe our little working relationship with him is set to continue just a little bit longer. After all, we just proved ourselves more nails than his previous most powerful right-hand fish lady, and more capable with a more can-do attitude. Why wouldn't he use us to take care of some other niggling little problems for him? Like, ooh, I don't know, the Lich King? Okay, now don't get me wrong, okay, because I love the old gods. For a Lovecraft cosmic horror guy like me, they are the ultimate bad guys, and I'm really unbelievably excited to see just how far in that direction Blizz dare to take the Void Lords when we eventually inevitably face up against them. But I know that for many people, maybe even the majority, the ultimate Warcraft baddie is the Lich King. And after Blizzard hit the panic button that said Illidan and Demon Hunters and the mother effing Ashbringer and the Burning Legion to win hearts and minds after Warlords of Draenor, they must know that pulling the same trick with the Lich King could potentially be an even bigger win and possibly just what they need right now with Battle for Azeroth not being one of the most popular expansions to date. And so it's worth clearing up a couple of things about the Lich King before we go any further because I know that when I say those two words, H. King. For the vast majority of players, one name springs instantly to mind. Arthas. A character that we've seen constant allusions to already in BFA, from Anduin walking in his footsteps in the Battle for Lordaeron cutscene, to his actual appearance in Jaina's Thross Nightmare. To most of us, Arthas is the Lich King. But of course he's not, is he? The Lich King is Bolvar Fordragon, the new 
Lich King. Except he's not new at all, is he? Because Arthas was the Lich King from the Frozen Throne in 2003 to the fall of the Lich King in 2009. Bolvar has been keeping himself on ice ever since. So he's been wearing that crown almost twice as long as the Prince of Lordaeron. And we know that he hasn't been doing nothing either. Anyone who's played through the Death Knight Order Hall campaign in Legion will know that far from being a benevolent force for undeath, just hanging out selflessly to keep the Scourge in check, Bolvar has been making some serious moves recently, raising some very powerful people to help him out and building up some incredibly impressive forces in the meantime. And then there's the fact that he just had a long lost daughter to turn up in Talia Fordragon, who knows that she's Bolvar's daughter, but doesn't yet know what happened to him. We've got new undead being created who are neither Forsaken nor Scourge in Kalia Menethil and Derek Proudmoore, both of whom have motivations that we don't yet fully understand. Basically, if you don't think something big is coming with Northrend in the near future, then I'm tempted to suggest that, you know, you just haven't really been paying attention, have you? So going back to Nazoth and the idea that we are basically now on his payroll and taking out people that he wants us to, but, you know, for the greater good and all that, until it goes horribly wrong and tentacles why might an old god want us to turn our attentions to the Lich King after seeing off Ashara? Well, actually, that question is really, really easy to answer. And I don't want to go into every little detail about the history of the Lich King here, okay? But to try and boil it down to the basics, the role, the entity that is the Lich King, was originally created by Kil Jaden to help the Burning Legion take over Azeroth. And why did the Burning Legion want to take over Azeroth? According to Chronicle, the most recent source of any of this lore, because they knew it had a sleep sleeping titan world soul. A world soul that the old gods are trying to corrupt for their void lord masters. Don't forget, the whole purpose of the Burning Legion, the whole purpose of Sargeras's Burning Crusade is to wipe out all life in the universe so that the void lords can't get it. Sargeras is so scared of the Void Lords and how powerful and evil they are and what they could do with a Void Corrupted Titan world soul, he would rather wipe out all life in the universe than let it fall under their control. That's literally what the Burning Crusade was. And when we went to Argus and saved the Titans and got him zapped to wherever he went with Illidan and the rest of the gang, he failed, which leaves the door wide open for the Void Lords to continue their mission, terrifyingly. But relevant to this video, the Lich King was created by Sargeras and the Burning Legion as another tool, another weapon, ultimately to stop the Old Gods and the Void Lords controlling Azeroth. It makes perfect sense that Nazoth is going to want to get rid of the Lich King. And it makes perfect sense that the Lich King is going to want to get rid of Nazoth, even if his motivations are a lot more complicated these days, granted. So for me, it would be a completely logical path of events. Nazoth has turned up and said, hey, thanks for bringing me back with the help of Zalatath, who is clearly connected to the Void Lords in some way, by the way. Wow, those Naga are causing some shit, eh? You know, I can help you sort them out for good if you like. It just so happens I could do with Ashara being out of the picture myself. So off we go and take care of him. After which he says, I don't want to alarm you, but oh shit, there is some stuff going down up north with the Lich King. You know, I could totally help you sort that out once and for all if you want, because it just so happens I could do with the Lich King out of the picture too. And lo and behold, 8.3 isn't the old god battle that we've all been expecting, but a return of the Lich King, where instead of heading to Argus for the final patch of the expansion, we head to a max level Northrend. Phased with a new storyline and then world quests and rares and world bosses and a dungeon and all of the other usual shit to do, hey, it would coincide pretty nicely with the fact that Wintergrasp has now become a queuable epic battleground, wouldn't it? And then a new climactic Ice Crown Citadel rage to take out Bolvar. And you might think that one single patch out of nowhere in 8.3 might be a bit of a waste as a way to encounter and take out the Lich King after all this time, but think of what this could set up. It lines up two things perfectly that a lot of people always think might happen, but have never been sure how they could happen. And this puts all of that shit on a plate. And bear with me here, okay, because this video is pretty much all speculation anyway, and there's nothing wrong with that, because speculation is fun. But I'm going to go right off at the deep end here, because if this did play out, Nazoth helps us defeat Ashara, then turns our attention to the Lich King for 8.3, what if it panned out like this? What if, at the end of the final raid of the expansion, after we've defeated Bolvar Fordragon, the Lich King, Sylvanas 
seize an opportunity. There must always be a Lich King, after all. And as Gromash asked the Banshee Queen as far back as Cataclysm, what is the difference between you and the Lich King now? To which she replied, isn't it obvious, War Chief? I serve the Horde. Well, she doesn't serve the Horde anymore, does she? The Horde serves her. She's been in charge of Arthas's Valkyr for a decade now. The Valkyr that are supposed to serve the Lich King. All this expansion, she's been raising mindless, scourge-like undead and attempting to take away the free will of her own Forsaken. It would not be a massive leap for her to see the power on offer here, especially if she knows there's an even bigger threat on the horizon that will need to be faced, which we kind of suspect she does know, and take the opportunity to become Sylvanas Windrunner. Lich Queen. And remember when I said this was a setup to two things really beautifully? Well, Ice Crown and the Lich King isn't the only thing in Northrend, is it? We've already spent a significant amount of time this expansion in Silithus, where one old god, Cthun, is to be found. We've already spent a lot of time in Stormsong, where it seems another old god, Nazoth, at least in some form, is to be found. If we were to head to Northrend for 8.3, we'd suddenly be spending a lot of time where the other old god, yogg saron is, wouldn't we? And remember what Nazoth called us? The Opener. The one who lights the way. What if our presence in these places with that Azerite infused necklace that we insist on wearing everywhere is helping the old gods regain their power? What if once the threat of Bolvar the Lich King is vanquished and his control over whatever death magic he wields has weakened, if that is the moment that Nazoth strikes and not just he but Cthun and yogg -Saron and shit why not, Yashaj somehow, somewhere are born, and the scene is well and truly set for the next expansion, World of Warcraft, the Black Empire, with four old gods awake and causing shit. An expansion where Alliance and the new Bane-led Horde don't just have those old gods to contend with, but also the new Lich Queen, Sylvanas, where, I don't know, maybe the answers we need are somewhere on the Dragon Isles. Does that all seem feasible to you? Because I've got to be honest. It seems pretty feasible to me right now. So back to the topic of this video. I guess I'm saying it's not an unbelievable scenario that we could end up fighting the Lich King before we fight Nazoth. I guess that's my conclusion, but I'd like to throw one more suggestion at you. What if the really fun thing is not who we fight against, but who we fight for? With Sylvanas the Lich Queen and the new bestest friends of Nazoth that many of us will be at that point, what if there's a new feature next expansion? What if, with BFA being all about faction loyalty, 9.0 is instead focused on a loyalty that we choose? What if we need to pick a side between the Lich Queen and the Zoth? If the factions, Horde and Alliance, still exist, but they're like as unimportant as they were in Legion, but you have this new, less restrictive system where you choose between the Lich and the old gods. And that gives you the different story arcs and loyalty experiences that I think are one of the most satisfying parts of BFA. How would this even work? I don't know, that seems like a whole other video, but you know, it would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? So what do you think, guys? Is Nazoth leading us a merry dance? And might that dance culminate in a tango of death with the Lich King before we face the Tentacly One himself? I think it might, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think of my 8.3 Northrend idea? And why am I totally wrong about Sylvanas taking up the mantle of the Lich Queen? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today for this special Taliesin Talks. I've been meaning to have this little chat for ages now, and it's, it's nice to get it off my chest just before we head off to the US for a few days. If you enjoyed this video, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who give their actual real-life money to make these videos happen. Without you guys, there would be a whole lot less Taliesin and Evertel videos, that is for sure. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. Remember, my name is Noble87. No, my name is Taliesin from me and Evertel. Until next time, cheerio.